Hey everybody, what is up? Dan here with the Professional Development Podcast. Uh, today is Wednesday, November 25th, and it's the day before Thanksgiving. So um, we're super excited. Yeah, uh, it is Skanksgiving today, isn't <laughs> That's it? That's so, why Matt's out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So <laughs> He doesn't have a client. <laughs> we have yeah. Bobby here, finally back. What's up? And we have Brad, and we have Colin and Matt out. And I, I do think, I think if I had to bet, Matt's out because of Skanksgiving. He's, he's getting ready for tonight, for uh, sure. Yeah. He's at Duke's right he's, now. He's plucking his eyebrows. Yeah. He's plucking Getting his a manicure, eyebrows. pedicure. Picking, yeah. picking out his outfit, <laughs> yeah. shining his shoes. All he's going to be looking so good. <laughs> so um, today we're going to talk about gratitude. Super excited. Um, gratitude's one of the um, things that I think is super important. Um, but before we get started, I just want to throw out there, um, if you guys are enjoying our content, if you like what we fucking say, even though some of the shit's off the wall, um, give us a like, sub- subscribe, tell a friend about it. Really, if you could just tell a friend about it. Like if we talk about something that resonates with you or with somebody that you know is, you know, they're going through a situation, like if you could just throw out, hey, check out this podcast. If you like our shit, then that would be very helpful. So share it around. Yeah. So that's just the quick housekeeping stuff. Um, I guess we can just dive in. You Let's know, go. it's weird because we only have a few people. Usually we have more people. And right. Usually at least four, I'm sure. Yeah. And usually Matt does the intro. So exactly. I'm a little lost right now. Matt's but. the secretary of the group, keeps us all in line. Yeah. So um, I'll dive in. So, first, you know, to get this kicked off, content. Um, I know it's been a crazy week. It's a short week. I don't know if anybody was able to take in any content or any books. Brad has started a book uh, recently that we are going to dive into here in about two or three weeks, but um, I guess I'll, I'll kick it off. So uh, gratitude, um, this kind of resonates with the, with the topic today, is uh, David Meltzer. Do you guys know who he is? I he, don't. He is um, CEO of, I think it's called 5050 Sports Media. Uh, I could get that wrong. But anyways, he's a he's an influencer, and he also is um, founder of the Elevator Pitch, which is like the number oh, one. Heard of that one? Yeah, it's like it's like Shark Tank. Only they get in an elevator, they go up. Is that with Dan Fleischman too, or no? Yeah, he might be I on the show. That, but yeah. Dave Meltzer is like the guy who like produced it or whatever. Anyways, so he does podcasts. He's an influencer, does speaking, all that shit, right? And um, he. Some some content came through. I, I listened to a podcast he was on. And he's like, "Listen, uh, I've studied law of attraction. I've studied this. I've studied that, and not one fucking thing has helped me and made me more successful than being grateful and practicing gratitude." So I figured that would kick off the uh, the podcast today. So, what are you guys grateful for? Well, I think first of all, like I always do every single week, I Google what is gratitude. So yeah. for me, because you're it, not, yeah. yeah, I'm not that smart. So <laughs> it came up, and it was the quality of being thankful, readiness to show appreciation for, and to return kindness. So for me, I mean, obviously everybody's going to say, "Oh, I'm thankful for my family and my health," blah blah blah. But since we're a business entrepreneurship type podcast, I tried to focus mainly on how does this apply to my life in business. So. What I'm grateful for is my employees, I mean, and the journey that I've gone through through this whole period. Because when I look back at three years ago when I was, you know, I I had had a side hustle going, then I'm like, okay, let's turn this into a business. Where I've came in three years, it's like, you kind of forget, like, and it kind of humbles you a little bit. Like, this is what I've done in three years. What can I do in another three years? So I'm grateful for everything I've learned in that journey. And there's been lots of failures along the way. And without those, I wouldn't be where I am now. And I'm thankful for my employees because they are on the same page as me trying to reach my goal. They're working for me, helping me get to where I need to be. And if you don't have people like that around you, it's, it's, it's almost impossible to get your goal by yourself. It's not saying it can't be done, but it's hard. So, and then we can dive into all this later. Yeah. Yeah. We can dive into So this is kind of where I got this. I think that's like work-related gratitude. That's where I'm at. Yeah. Yeah. So what about you, Bobby? Let's just, let's stick with like work-related type shit. Like every day. Are you grateful for like where you're at? You know what I mean? Yeah. I so I it was funny. I actually uh, met up with a guy on my team, Bryson, before I came down here, and he uh, recently was just talking about um, uh, possibly leaving Aflac, and he's my he's like oh, my really? top dude and uh, my number one. Like if I were to be promoted, I'd say here's the next guy in line. And uh, a lot has changed over the last couple weeks. So um, as far as from a from like a workplace gratitude, it's it's really interesting for me because I I, I kind of want to tie this into something that 
like a few years ago. So I just reshared something on Facebook today from yeah. this gratitude meeting that um, my brother was at five years ago. At, at that point in time, I was um, working for SBM in the janitorial industry of all places, but like made good money, didn't love what I was doing. And I've gotten to a point now where I was able to, on the day before Thanksgiving, where usually like most people like in the nine to five W2 type jobs, yeah. they're clocked in right now. They will be most likely, well, maybe earlier, maybe they'll leave earlier day before Thanksgiving, yeah, Thanksgiving, maybe, like yeah. Matt. They got to get yeah. ready. But get prepped. usually, uh, like you were thinking about like people working nine to five, they punch in, they punch out. And today was able to just go meet up with Bryson and talk to him. I, I met up with him in Tower Grove because we couldn't eat anywhere inside. Yeah. We picked up Max Local Eats down the street here and <laughs> hosta, hosta a couple burgers. Yeah. And the reason that I mentioned that is because, um, from from where I was at five years ago to now, have been able to build up an organization with Aflac that um, has had a lot of ups and downs. It's been really tough. Obviously, the insurance industry is just like I mean, you, it's really tough to build a career with that, and it's not a yeah. sexy thing. Um, so, it's been fun to focus on the things like training and leadership that is like the big part of what we do, right? Like at the end of the day, we sell insurance. Yeah. But I am incredibly grateful just for the journey that I decided to take because we were able to have a conversation today about just like what the next steps look like moving forward, what, how far we've come, um, over the last few months. Cause he's actually been sober now for a few months as well, like me. Um, and it's just changed our lives drastically. And, and in a down year, that's the craziest thing is we have done less production this year than we have in years past. And, uh, we still feel like we're killing it because we've, we've made a lot of positive changes. So yeah. they go so much, so hand in hand as far as like the personal and the business side of things because it is truly all like one to me. Um, but I am grateful that I don't have to punch the clock every single day. That's for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I mean, you know, I mean, ever since I was little, I wanted to have my own business. And, you know, whenever I got out of school, I had these ideas. Whenever I got out of high school, I had ideas. So I try things and then I fucking quit because I didn't have resources or I just didn't put the time in required to grow it. And, um, and so it's funny. And like, you know, uh, one of the things I always think about is, you know, in my office, I have, um, some things hanging up around the office. And one is Roof Restore, which is a company that I wanted to, st- it's a <laughs> business card I had made, you know, and it was Roof, Roof Restore. And um, it was, uh, you know, when you drive past people's houses, they put all this money in their landscaping, but then they got like shit stains on their uh, their roof, you know, those black streaks. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh, somebody should start a business. So I tried that. And, and fucking the chlorine was so powerful that it like burns your throat like while you're trying to apply. <laughs> That's like a big business right now though. <laughs> is it? Yeah, it's See? kicking off. Now. I would have ki- I would have yeah, killed it. It seriously is. I would have reti- be retired right now. I was now. ahead of the curve. It <laughs> yeah. was a wrong uh market product fit or whatever. Right place, wrong time. Right? Yeah, hey. yeah, I was too early. That's it. My brain. Uh no, so um so like that was a, considered a failure, right? Because I didn't go through with it. I didn't build it. So like I like that as a reminder. I'm grateful that I exactly. did that and I learned that and and then I did uh I did a carpet cleaning business and I went out and I bought this fucking huge machine and I get my first <laughs> job and I'm all excited. Well, it was on the sixth floor of a fucking condo and you had to carry this thing filled with water because there was no running water up oh, all these boy. stairs. Oh my God. That's uh, not you either. No. Well, hey, you were probably thinner back then. I, I don't know. <laughs> well, maybe like 10 pounds. Oh, like, okay. But, you know, that was like, uh, that was a thing, like, fuck this, I don't want to do this, you know? And so I was great, I'm grateful for those, like, little lessons I learned, like, I didn't grow this business, but there was a reason for it, and so now I'm where I'm at after a couple of small failures, you could call them, I don't call them failures, I call them learning experiences, but I'm thankful for those, uh, and, and just building on that. So from a business perspective or from a work perspective, it's really being thankful for the shit that humbles you exactly. um, more than like the good times. Cause I think it's even in, you know, kind of segueing a little bit, like, do you think it's easier to be thankful when everything is really good or when things are bad? I think it's easier when it's bad. I mean, I think it's easier to forget the good things than it is to forget the bad things. Yeah. And to me, that reminds me of like, okay, you done fuck this up. So how do we not do that? It's like I always tell people, like, if I could know everything that, you know, say a guy like Bill Gates or 
Zuckerberg, if you could know all the things that they fucked up, right. you know how successful you'd be? Like, who cares about the things that they succeeded on? Yeah. Just don't do all the shit they fucked up on. Yeah. So, I mean, that's where, when you said it's not a failure, it's a learning experience. That's how I look at it. You know, failure is, it's going to happen in any industry, any business. But if you learn something every single time you make a mistake, you've done something. Yeah, I think the only way you can actually fail is to just not fucking do something. Yeah. That's yeah. the biggest thing, man. I, I It was funny. I was, I talk to people a lot about the things that they feel like they're not doing good at. And then I ask them, well, have you been doing that? Like someone on my team doesn't like, oh, I don't really love prospecting. I don't really love doing this, um, making cold calls. It's like, well, how many are you doing right now? Well, none. Yeah. You yeah. hate something you're not doing. Yeah. And a lot of the times, like you said, people aren't doing the hard things that um, is going to put them in uncomfortable situations uh, in order to be successful in the business. Well, uh, yeah, and and we might be off topic a little bit, but we got some extra time. Today. We do. Yeah, so, we're good. like, this is this is one of my things. So, there's people that will come in for interviews in the recruiting world, and they will fucking knock it out of the park. Like the hiring manager's like, "This is the best person I've ever fucking seen." Like, get them an offer. We want to get them on board, right? And then they get on board, um, and they end up being really bad. They just interview well. But anybody that can interview well and does a bad job on the job knows what they fucking need to do. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? They just sure. fucking spit it out of their mouth. They know what needs to be done to do a good job. They just choose not to. So to your point, I guess, not to get off topic with no, that, gratitude. I think that's fair. Um, shoot. I, I mean, it, it's all kind of – everything that we always talk about seems to go hand in hand like one way or another. Yeah. And uh, I think that's a big part of it is, I mean, being grateful for the stuff that you did that was hard. And I agree with you and Brad on uh, just the fact that the things, whenever things get really tough is when I find myself being the most grateful. Um, like just being sick like this past, this past like week. Yeah. Um, and then I honestly, I was in a really, I was in a really bad rut. Like I was super emotional. I, I lost, like I lost, uh, a good friend of mine, uh, passed away on Saturday, this yeah. past Saturday. Sorry about that. It's all good, man. Um, and like it's it still stings right like worked with him for the last few years and was a super good guy like great family man just great overall dude and um earlier this year lost another friend at, at, like three or four days after i decided to get sober and i could have easily taken that as a sign to go and start drinking again and yeah. smoking and all that stuff and i just decided i was like no, it's going to be different. And um, it makes you, whenever you go through tough shit, it's, I think that's when you're most grateful because you realize that like at the end of the day, everything is going to be okay. Even though we are in the midst of, a, still in the midst of a pandemic and yeah. um, bad shit happens every single day. You just don't see it with a lot of people. And I think this this is kind of off topic too, but then you just got to realize like you never know what the person sitting across from you is going through. Right, no, 100%, you know, and and that's, you know, to your point, when things are bad for me, like it is easy to look back and be like, oh man, I was doing good at this certain point. Like I'm grateful for like <laughs> for that or this skill that I picked up or something like that. And so, and, and that's where I, I kind of wanted you to answer that th that way. <laughs> so uh, Ed Milet, who I listened to and Brad knows and you know and everybody knows, hopefully listening or you should know about. Yeah. <laughs> um, check him if out. If not, listen. Yeah, so, you know, he has his story where like, he was so broke and, you know, that they cut his water off, right? And so now, even though he's a multimillionaire and he's, you know, the pinnacle of, you know, influencing game and all that shit, you know, he is grateful every morning for running water. Exactly. You know, something, something so, so simple. simple. Yeah. And so when things are really good, and that's what, and, um, you know, I believe in God, so I'll just throw that out there, but... um and, and so every night, you know, what I do, even though things have been really good this year for me, you know, knock on wood, I ended up right place, right time, I guess you could say. Um, I definitely put in the work, but, you know, I kind of got lucky in terms of what industry I was in, in terms of my business. And so, but every night, you know, I just, I, I try to find little things that I'm thankful for, whether it's my kids' health or, you know, things that are outside of the business or work world. Do you guys have any of those things that you are thankful for? On a, or like, do you stop yourself and say, like, I am thankful? You know, I know shit's going this way or shit's going that way, but, like, this is what I have to be thankful for so you know, the, in my the, life. The thing that I do is I always think about how it could always be worse. There's somebody out there that's dealing with something that's worse than me. Right. As bad as it may seem, as 
bad of a card as you've been dealt, there's somebody that has something way worse. So that's how I always think about it. I don't know if I necessarily sit like, oh, I'm thankful that I, I have wonder- a roof over my head or, you know, whatever. And I always try and tell my wife this. I'm like, she'd be like, oh, I don't feel good. I'm like, well, somebody's got cancer. Like you got a, <laughs> Mike, you got a headache. Like, come on, yeah, you'll be yeah. fine. You know? So like, that's why I always try and paint the picture. Like we're going to be fine. Like everybody's going to get through this. We're all going to, and I think that's kind of something that's happening during this year. There's so many people that they have a, you know, a shit sandwich dealt to them. And then it's just like, oh, well, life sucks. Yeah. Instead of thinking like, okay, well, we'll get through this and move on. So, yeah. but that's just how my attitude's always been in life. So I, that is how it is for me. Yeah. I think with I think uh, like I mean that's a good point too. Even where like someone's having like a headache or something like that, and you're like, oh, this is the worst day ever. But yeah. like perceptions, reality, right? So if someone yeah. thinks they're having the worst day, it's because in their mind they're having like a really bad day. Yeah. But it, then it is humbling to think about people that are going through chemotherapy or yeah. people that have loved ones that are on a ventilator right now, like whatever that might be. So for so for me on uh, from a gratitude standpoint. Um, I feel like I'm pretty, I mean, I'm pretty grateful for the decision that I made earlier this. And I, I know it's one of those things that I talk a lot about, but it's so relevant oh, I mean, for if me. It, if it's a life-changing thing. Is yeah. is sobriety. Um, I hit five months on Monday, um, which if someone go. told me that, because I mean, I'll be at six months before the end of this year, two days before Christmas. And if someone would have told me, hey, Bobby, you're going to be six months sober in 2020, I would have bet the house against that. Yeah. Be like, no shot, my belongings, every single penny that I own, like gone. So- I, I'm very grateful for all the bad stuff that happened this year in order for me to get there between um, a three and a half year relationship ending that um, was awesome for so many moments. and But we knew it was the right thing to end things. Or um, then the next day, like after I decided to get sober, a coworker's friend ended up uh, dying or coworker's um, son who was dead um, and uh, was pronounced brain dead. So she had to pull the plug on her son. Oh. Then on Thursday night, Corey dies in a drunk driving accident. And it's just like, and so I'm a big believer. And so more, I have, I grew up Catholic, right? So Mm -hmm. I grew up believing God. I went away from that for a really long time and it was all like the universe and good karma. And I still believe in that. Yeah. But now I, I mean, I wear this wristband every day that says, let go, let let go, let God, hashtag Kojo for Corey. Um, And it just like, it's a reminder every single day that something like a lot of really bad things had to happen in order for me to make those decisions. So I'm, I'm grateful for my sobriety. I've been able to handle a lot of emotionally challenging situations a lot better than I ever would have if I was still drinking. Yeah. Um, and that in turn has helped my business, even though this year, like we are way down on our, or I shouldn't say way down. We're about 75% of where our production was this time last year. That, that's which, a pretty good amount though. It's not terrible, right? Like mm-hmm. it could, it could be a lot worse. We've, we've hustled pretty hard for it. Um, but like, at the end of the day, like I know these next coming years, me having this mindset that I'm in now, like I was kind of stuck in those years where I was like drunk the entire year. I crushed it. I went four for four on my bonus or the next year went three for four and um, was doing great. I qualified for trips and all this stuff. And since I was on top of the world there, it felt like there was no bringing me down. So like, I look back at those moments even where I was like fucked up and stuff. And I'm not like grateful for those situations because it didn't make me a better person. It just made me think that I could continue down the path that I was continuing and I wasn't challenged in a way um, financially or emotionally. And if I was, I freaking, as they would say in Always Sunny in Philadelphia, I stuffed it down with some brown, what Danny yeah. DeVito always said. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I, I think that with something like this, man, it's uh, it's easy for me to look at the bad stuff as things that I'm grateful for. But at the end of the day, if I wasn't sober, I wouldn't be able to handle half the shit. Yeah, this well, year. I, I think you proved to yourself that you have, hey, I have discipline, right? Like That's new. You know, uh, <laughs> uh, well, like for me, you know, when I am losing weight, <laughs> Uh, it's like I don't lose anything and then I fucking say no to a Snickers bar and then the next day I dropped a pound. It's almost like fucking karma where <laughs> if I did say no, like good things happen and the more you're faced with adversity and the more you can get through that, I think the stronger that you are. Um, and then back to gratitude. So, and I'm trying to figure out like, I, I, cause I'm kind of like, I don't prep much for these things. I, I got, I got something we could dive down on gratitude. You want to? Yeah. So, I mean, as far as gratitude goes and showing appreciation for people, um, this even works personally as well as in business is something you don't see people doing all the time. And it, to me, I just wrote down like the power of thank you. Like how many times have you been walking in a gas station and you open the door and somebody walks in and they just 
walk right on by. I fucking hate that. Yeah, it fucking pisses me or off. Like, I literally or if say I you're some, welcome yeah, out loud. I'm I like, you're too. welcome. It's like, <laughs> if, if I let somebody in on the highway or whatever and they don't, they don't fucking wave, wave yeah. you're just I, like, just I love, I I love giving the wave. Yeah. I love giving the wave. <laughs> so to me, is like, I, I wrote this down as, as being like an employer of like, when I see one of my guys at work do something that like, I'm like, damn, they, they did that by themselves. They didn't have to go over, ask me a question. They did what they needed to do. And I'm like, hey, man, thanks for doing that. Like, or you did a really good job. Like, just giving that, those words is like game changing as far as being an employer. Cause it's like, it, it money can't buy that. Like, and you know that, like, yeah, somebody yeah. could give you a bonus and that's great. But if somebody just walks up and says, like, man, thank you, you did a really good well, job. There's, there's a difference, right? Like, you either earned a bonus, so I fucking did the work for that. But yeah. that's that's not really showing appreciation because you worked for it. Exactly. You know what like, I mean? Like, that's in your contract. Like, right, this is what right. I have to do to get this. Right. Like, they're just doing their but job. Appreciation is like saying, you know, like, one of the things I did this, this year, so I had an employee leave and um, somebody, uh, one of, this, this girl who works for me, she was more junior, but she said, Hey, she left. I'd really like to do this. Yeah. You know, I want to, I want to step up and she didn't have to fucking do that. And she would have got the same money and all that stuff, but she was willing to step up. And so, you know, I went and I got her a $200 gift card just like, and it was just a thank you. Like, this is not a bonus. This is not anything. Just thank you. A just because type deal. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, cause I appreciate you stepping up when we needed somebody. And so I definitely think gratitude or like, sh- the yeah. power of thank you is real. And in, in the book we're reading, The Magic of Thinking Big, he actually told a story almost similar to what you're saying. Oh, really? He, yeah, so a guy, you know, quits or gets fired, and they they bring two other two other people into his office and say, hey, do you want to pick up this workload until we find somebody new? And those two guys said no. The third guy comes in, they said, hey, you know, these guys already said no. Would you be willing to do this? And he, he knew he couldn't do it, but he said, yeah, I'll do it. He took over basically working two jobs. He found a way to make it work. And after the period was done, they said, hey, we can't really find anybody, but we'll give you a raise of, you know, 30 grand a year and you just keep doing the roles you're doing. But he found a way to make it work. And I think that's, we've talked about this in other situations. It's like, if you want something, you work for it, you'll make it happen. And like, obviously his boss was grateful that he did that and rewarded him. He didn't have to do that. Yeah. So. Well, I, there's uh, Chick-fil-A, okay? Chick-fil-A, you go to a fucking Chick-fil-A and the fucking line is like... Ridiculous. They're it's crazy. It's like Disneyland, you know? But it fucking flows. And the reason why that shit flows is because their training program is they teach every one of their employees to say please and thank you to the customers. And that's pretty much it. And what's the, what's and the isn't one? That, that's my pretty ple- fucking is amazing. It my pleasure? Please awesome. and thank you have built a business. Is it my pleasure? Is uh, that what they yeah, say? I mean, like that? I yeah. guess that's saying thank you. Yeah, something yeah. like that. If, if they don't say it before you do, you get like your free meal. Really? <laughs> yeah. So, I didn't know that. Yeah. So, so you pull so up right Pull up and, and just say it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> Where's my, my food? <laughs> but, th- but that's the thing is like, it's amazing that a company's just like built a whole successful business off of thank yous. And I think that applies too to your customers. Like I'm sure like if you had somebody come in or you sell a policy to and you say, hey, thanks for doing that. I mean, you don't have to thank them for buying something because- I thank every single person yeah. who signs up with me. Exactly. And I bet you that that resonates with them when they're, they're going to remember that because especially like you say, it's not fancy selling insurance. Like how many insurance guys do you think take the time out of their day to, to do something that shows appreciation or thanks or gratitude for that? And the same thing for Dan. I think that's why he's built such a good recruiting business that he's he's made it right with people that he said like he didn't have to um, you know place somebody new if somebody quit after their right. contract was over. Well, that's showing gratitude for their business. And then, like you said, that's paid over yeah. in dividends. Yeah, 100%. And so, so I think, like, I'm going to owe five bucks. Oh. Andy Frisella. So, <laughs> is that the, now is it five bucks? <laughs> yeah, it's five Damn bucks it. for a mention. <laughs> so, uh, in the bucket, right? So, is Emily charging that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll send it to her. Um, so, you know, he even talks about this in some of the early episodes of the MF CEO where he, every single fucking customer that signed up with him, he would like send them handwritten thank you cards because, you know, he didn't and have a ton of customers, but they even, they're still they doing still that They still do that shit. with Supplement Superstore. They're still doing that yeah. shit. They still send shit to people's homes and like, that's how you, I mean, it's amazing that you can build a whole fucking business on just saying thank you. Yeah, like at first you think it's super tacky and then you realize like somebody sat down and actually hand wrote a note and it's like, yeah, they didn't have to do that. That's yeah. a huge deal for a lot of people to see something like that. And uh, even just going back towards like the, uh, not to backtrack, but you were talking about just thanking your employees for for doing something that's like 
maybe part of their job, maybe they went above and beyond a little bit. Um, if you can compensate them, like that's awesome. But a lot of times just that, uh, this is something they talk about in the carrot principle is, and that's by Adrian Gostick. And I can't remember the other guy, but it's two guys who wrote it. And, uh, there's four core characteristics of leadership. It's accountability, goal setting, honesty, and communication. Did I say that already? Um, I don't know. No, and I think the, you got four. No, uh, cool. Four, four for four. <laughs> awesome. The last one is, uh, still have a little bit of brain fog. The last thing that ties it all together is recognition. So if you're not recognizing your, um, people and it's recognizing people on the spot, right? So like if Brad the next week would have said, thank you to your employee for something that he did a week ago, it'd be like, yeah, no shit. I did that a week ago. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But they're going to appreciate that so much more if you recognize them on the spot and be grateful on the spot. And if you're grateful on the spot and people can, they feel that they feel that whether it's at Chick-fil-A or, um, at BP fab, you know, like, or if it's one of your policy holders or your clients, et cetera, um, they'll never forget that kind of stuff. They take it with them. And then whether you end up doing business with them or not, or you end up, maybe you lose them as a client, but they're always someone who will, be likely to refer you. Yeah. No doubt. Well, I mean, I, I also think that there's, you know, and maybe this is kind of like taking away from the power of thank you, but <laughs> I, I think that there's so many motherfuckers that don't do it. Uh, oh, <laughs> that yeah. All you have to do is do it. Yeah. And you're better than 90, 90% of other people. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like just doing those little things with intention. I'm huge on intention lately, but if you know, you're putting intent into like, I'm going to handwrite this thank you card because I truly am appreciative. Like, you know, you allowing me to, to do what I do, uh, I really appreciate. And so I love when like musicians get up and they're like, Hey, we just, we're thankful for all the people out here because like, without you, we're we just making music. Your- yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, and I don't, I think that's for real. I think those people or those musicians are, are being a hundred percent honest. Like, I can't believe I get to fucking make music for a living. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like so, people that are playing sports as adults. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, That's seriously, like, you're literally a fucking <laughs> kid. Yeah, you're, playing. you're doing kid shit as yeah. an adult and you're getting paid millions of dollars yeah. for it. So, um, and uh, did you have anything else? I don't have a whole lot more for gratitude. So, well, no. I'm trying to kind of reverse engineer this gratitude thing. So, th- and if I'm off topic, that's my bad. I should have planned a little bit better. Um, but there's this, uh, it's a video actually. And so this guy, gets out of a jet basically and a guy who's rolling a Bentley looks at him is like man I wish I had a jet Uh, and then a guy in a Corolla looks at the guy in the Bentley and they're like damn I wish I had a Bentley and then a guy in a on a bicycle looks at the guy in the Corolla and says damn I wish I had a Corolla uh, yeah I wish I had a car you know (laughs) and then a guy who's walking looks at a guy fucking on the bike like damn I wish I had a bike and then at the very end it's a guy in a wheelchair being like man I just I just wish I could walk and so you know it, when you that whole like chain of events but whenever they look at the like you said people do have worse situations yeah. that's when you kind of pull some gratitude like oh maybe it's not that fucking bad that I'm rolling a fucking Bentley and yeah. I don't have a private jet you know what I mean <laughs> yeah, but yeah. It, I mean I think you could break that down as little as you wanted to and it still plays out right? yeah yeah for yeah. any scenario yeah. and so I think it's you know because like for me being content is very hard like I'm always like what's next what's next what's next but like stopping to be present and being thankful for what I have today and what I've done today like that kind of grounds me and it, and ever since I've been doing that thing at night where like I, I pray basically, you know, in my head. I don't like yeah. to fucking say it out loud or anything, but um You don't get on your knees, but and your I'm wife just like, does. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh god, I hope oh, she man. doesn't listen to this. Uh it no, was so, such a good episode until then. <laughs> Damn. All good, all good, all good. Uh we'll talk about that after. Nice. Now, um, good one. <laughs> but but basically, you know, ever since I've been doing that, like literally my business has gone like four X. Just from being grateful for like the littlest things in life. Like fucking the, the micro shit um i mean i get it I, I i totally see what you're saying because for christmas my wife's like what do you want and i said a journal and like i tried to journal before and i just couldn't get into it because it was like just a notebook. paper and plan code dude yeah right there it is right there now she has to pay us five dollars <laughs> no. so just because for me like what you're saying like to be humbled by those things like if i don't write these down like am i gonna remember all the good things so it's like, I yeah. want to have that wrote down on paper or in like in five years, I can pull out my journal and be like, oh, fuck, look what I did this day, you know? And like, it could be fucking two sentences every day. So I think I'll be doing the same sort of thing you're doing in your brain, just putting pen to paper. Yeah. 
And I think that's just, I mean, it comes down to being mindful and it's doing things like that as a form of meditation on a daily basis. Even if you do it for one or two minutes, um, it's, it can help you just kind of recenter and, and get, uh, just ready to take on your day. And I think it's similar to the affirmations that we talked about a couple weeks ago too, like every day saying things like, um, you are, you are great at this. You are the CFO of your business. You are this, you are that. Um, and I think it's the same thing with gratitude. Like before you go to bed, say, write down, I don't know, it could be one thing. It could be five things. It could be 10 things that you're grateful for, whether it's running water or it's uh, the fact that you landed a new client that day or like things that um, maybe aren't necessarily in your control, you yeah. know? Um, and I think that's really powerful to do stuff like that and to see that grow. I mean, it's because every single day you're thinking about the things that you are grateful for and it allows you to focus on, that's your first domino of the day or it's like that last, It's the sometimes it's the thing you do the night before that sets you up for the, that's how I am because I'm not a morning person like Brad. Yeah, so so sure. at night, you you think about the things that you're grateful for. You go to bed thinking about those things. You probably think about some of those things when you wake up too, and it, it allows you to be able to have a, a good day af- right after that, which is powerful. For yeah. sure. A lot of people don't do that. Yeah. Nobody probably. <laughs> yeah, it's very tough. It's tough. less than a percent, no yeah. doubt. Yeah. But, I mean, that's all. Anything else? You got anything? I mean, that that's the main stuff that uh, I like to talk about. Usually th- this oh, day— I- yeah, go ahead. No, you're good. <laughs> no, I was going to say the meat and potatoes, but that was like the turkey. Ooh, yeah. yeah the don't steal potatoes. Are yeah. you guys... Okay, let's talk Thanksgiving real quick. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> you like the dark meat? Always. I love or dark white meat. meat. Dark meat for sure. I'm a dark meat guy. So much more flavor. There is more flavor. True. Yeah. What about sides? I'm a stuffing. <laughs> oh, stuffing's the best part of stuffing Thanksgiving. Stuffing is awesome. So I saw this thing, Barstool Sports posted on Instagram, and it was like the three, like of these, which are your three sides? And I know the ones that I would choose were sweet potatoes, stuffing, and I'm a green bean casserole guy. Okay. Oh, green bean casserole oh, I rocks. I used to hate green bean casserole. Like, I just like the top. Like the, I the go crispy in the, with the crunchies. I'm the fucking guy at the family thing that like scrapes off the top. And everybody's like, <laughs> where the fuck the top goes? The there's, just, <laughs> there's just green no, beans Dan's left. Dan's got them all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, what about what are those uh, cranberries or what is those fucking, candied yams? Those can yeah. I do. That's like I, I have you had like, them? No, I don't like those at all. Really? I never even That's like tried basically it. A sweet you know potato, what? Right? I don't know. I I don't think yeah. I, I don't know if I've had them. Now that I think yeah. about it, I that's like I basically look at, a sweet potato. I think they scare like me because they serious? they look yeah, like a yam. I've never tried sweet potato. It. They look like a vegetarian Jello, and I'm just like, no, they look like some. If sweet potatoes on your top three, I bet you like it. No, fair enough. I love sweet potatoes. They do look fucking like low level shit yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right uh so i mix you know my corn and my mashed oh. potatoes oh yeah my turkey. You gotta do that. You i do mix that? everything yeah. okay yeah i'm yeah. a mixer uh, did, did, sure. i'm not one of those yeah, people that sure. separates everything my grandmother eat does one that. thing at a time literally no. nothing can touch if if it touches she doesn't eat it really oh. yeah she's weird wow that's crazy i, I mean hopefully anything. i don't think she'll listen to this but she knows <laughs> that like me calling her weird is me saying i love her come on grandma <laughs> give us a listen grandma she, Okay, so so I'll send this to her. Yeah. I'll main, let her know she got a shout yeah, she out. She got a shout out. <laughs> main course has been had. Now, what kind of pie are you guys? You guys go. That's, pie? that's even a question on what, Thanksgiving. Which one? I go pumpkin. It's got yeah. Is that is there another option? I'm not Either. a huge pie guy, um, yeah. but I will. I will usually eat like a small slice of pumpkin pie. Pumpkin pie. Yeah, it's I like pumpkin Dan, and apple. People make cherry pies. Not for Thanksgiving. Like that. Who makes cherry pie for Thanksgiving? I, I think know. we usually have, have apple and pumpkin. Apple, I could see. Happening. Apple pie. Okay. So apple pie. Apple, cherry pie. <laughs> apple pie. Psychopaths yeah. eat cherry pie. On Dan's, Thanksgiving. Gonna, <laughs> Dan's like, how come I can't find a cherry pie? Everybody bought them all. <laughs> it's only pumpkin and apple. <laughs> <laughs> you got to warm it up. And so, apple pie, you got to warm that up in the microwave. I've heard throw warm some, apple pies throw really some good. Vanilla <laughs> ice cream throw on top. Throw some vanilla ice cream yeah. on top. Boom. Seriously? Oh, yeah. yeah. You've done that? Every. Who is this guy? I've never done that. America. <laughs> yeah. Guys, I am i don't eat desserts. Desserts not your You're course. Just, weren't you just saying you eat pumpkin pie? I'm skinny. Pie? <laughs> I'm skinny. <laughs> wow. I've never tried that. Yeah, you need You'll to. like it. That's a thing. Interesting. Yeah. So, you doing something for Thanksgiving? Uh, so uh, I, I didn't make my wife cook. So I have my dad's side comes over tonight, Wednesday night. And then Thursday, we have two family things that we do. But I didn't make my wife cook, so we catered. Uh, like, the whole meal was already fucking cooked. <laughs> you just 
pick it up. It was like Whole Foods. It's like two. No, Bristol's. Oh, Bristol's. <laughs> nice. Did you separate it? Also, it doesn't look like somebody. <laughs> yeah, it was. It. My little, family's doing Whole Foods. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little fancier than I'm used to. Uh, it was like two hundred bucks. Dude, but, I, I believe mean, it. At the end of the day, like when you make that shit, times money, baby. Yeah, I know. Like, and if don't you can source fuck, it out for fifteen yeah. bucks an and hour. And don't fuck it up. <laughs> well, yeah, they don't fuck it up. Yeah. There's uh, quality there, I and mean, Whole Foods probably brings some quality too. You know? I have no idea. We're about to find out but, tomorrow. I mean, stay when, tuned for when next you week's buy review. the fucking turkey and you buy the ingredients and then you mix it all together, yeah. it's gonna cost you 150 bucks anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And the time, time. Yeah, that's dude, we've time talked about money. that before. Yeah. Fuck. So speaking of time, we'll wrap this one up. Um, thanks so much for. I'm grateful for the listeners. That's right, guys. Why sure. the fuck didn't we say that at the beginning? I guess we're grateful. We, for them. He can edit that in right there. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> at, okay. at the beginning. <laughs> move, move that to the wait front. till the very <laughs> put it on our like uh, on our. Description. Wait till the very end to find out what we're really grateful for. Exactly. You've got to listen. <laughs> Don't fast forward. To the whole actually thing. listen. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Thank you so much for listening, guys. Again, if if you like our shit, please subscribe just so we uh, can keep releasing some content to you. Uh, good to have Bobby back finally. I'm pumped so to be back. Man. We're excited for that. But um, fuck Matt and Callan. We're out. <laughs> yep. See ya. Later. <laughs>